On the agenda tonight, we're going to be having a look at and having a listen to Karen Carpenter, and she's going to be performing They Long To Be Close To You. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So there have been a lot of requests for this one, taking a look at Karen's voice to see how accurate it was pitch wise. So what we're going to be doing is looking at a live performance and comparing that with the original record. And we're going to have the pitch monitoring software on screen with the live performance that will be going alongside it. So we'll jump into the live performance first. Something that I didn't mention is that I've isolated the vocal from this live performance. So we'll only hear Karen's voice. And I've done the same with that original record so we can hear the studio version isolated as well. So we can compare the two. Just for reference as well, the performance here is a live vocal, but the backing was the studio backing. So she was singing along to a backing track effectively. So the keys are exactly the same. So we get a direct relationship between a live vocal and a studio vocal. And if you've seen the videos recently, hopefully you've got an idea by now how it works. But let's have a listen and have a look. Suddenly appear every time. You are near, just like me, they long to be close to you, why do stars fall down from the sky, every time you walk by, just like me. They long to be close to you On the day that you were born The angels got together And decided to create a dream come true Soon they sprinkle moon dust in your hair Gold and starlight in your eyes are blue I'm just going to jump in here while we see Richard do that little piano run, which of course we're not going to hear. But the first thing to mention is that Karen's waveforms are insane. When we're talking about vocal accuracy pitch, and this is something that a lot of people asked about, whether Karen had perfect pitch and was pitch perfect. And those two things are different. So first of all, being pitch perfect means hitting a pitch to the ear really accurately so that they never really sound like they're missing a note. They're always on pitch. But that doesn't mean when you're looking at 440 hertz tuning as we are doing here, it doesn't mean that it's always on the line. It means that it's perfect to the ear because the lines are human made. It's something that we've tried to explain music away with by just <laughs> making a scale that you can refer to to explain notes and where they are and where frequencies land on this particular scale. But music doesn't work that way as I've explained in previous videos. When we're talking about having perfect pitch, that's where you can hear a note and tell what that note is without any reference points. So somebody will play a note on a piano and then you'll be able to say what that note is because you have perfect pitch. So let's have a look at these waveforms. Like I said, they are insane because of Karen's accuracy pitch wise, but not only that, her ability to hold a note on pitch. And if we're just looking at this phrase here, and I have been messing around with this, so we might better get it full screen to make it clearer. Here, I mean, we are dead on. Interestingly, Karen's vibrato is pretty much always under the line. So she goes flat of the note with vibrato. We've seen a lot of singers that have gone both flat and sharp. Some singers that have just gone sharp, but she's mostly flat of the note. And Every vibrato is different, every singer is different, it is very much their footprint, uh, their identity in their singing voice is their vibrato, as well as tone, expression, everything else you want to add in there. But certainly the vibrato makes it sound like a particular person's voice, with the speed of it as well. But we are slightly flat with the vibrato, but look at how accurate we are with our notes 
I mean, we are dead on the G4 here, and we're going up as well to the A, and that's the A4, and we're coming down just sharp of the E4, but we just touch here on the F sharp 4. So we are super accurate all the time. As we take our way, let's work our way back a little bit. You'll see that, I mean, when I'm talking about auto-tune in previous videos, relating it to that, we're still a little bit sharp now and again, but <laughs> we're sharp here again. But look at the accuracy with which Karen is ascending through her range and just hitting these notes absolutely bang on. But these are waveforms of a natural voice. It's not auto-tune. And I don't think you could mistake this for auto-tune because look at the way that we are sharp here. And again, we're sharp here, but then we're bang on. Let me just uh, move back a little bit. Great example here of maintaining pitch. And just to make things clear, this was before Auto-Tune Auto -Tune came along in 1997. And this is by far the most accurate vocal. This is a live vocal, by the way. The most accurate vocal pitch-wise that I have seen so far in my life. And I've always known that Karen was very, very accurate pitch-wise with her voice so consistent. But until you see the waveforms, it gives you a whole new appreciation of it. And here you can see again that vibrato that's happening flat of the D4. So bang on the note and then vibrato and then bang on the note when she's holding it without any vibrato. We're just going to move back again. Because we're not relying on computers here, it means that Karen's voice can go slightly flat, slightly sharp in between notes here. Look at this vibrato again under the line, but look at this C4 bang on, D4 bang on. And this, we've got this slide, it's a very quick slide up to the D4, and she absolutely nails it. So now what I'm going to get up on screen are the vocal waveforms from the original, the studio release. So, it's going to be that studio quality vocal, you'll be able to hear the difference, but Karen wouldn't need <laughs> multiple takes in order to get this down, as we're about to find out when we compare these waveforms. But let me just get that on screen. Unfortunately, it does obliterate Karen a little bit, but we'll go full screen so you guys get a clearer view of the original record and the live vocal next to it. And because these are two separate vocals, you'll be able to hear the difference, but they are different tempos as well. So they will go out of sync, but at the beginning, they're pretty close. So let's have a little listen. It's going to sound like two voices, obviously, to begin with, because it is. Every time you are near, just like me, they long to be close to you. So, I'm just going to stop it there because when you're listening to the studio vocal, comparing it with the live vocal, you really almost can't hear any difference. And this is where it's fascinating looking at the waveforms because anybody that would say, oh, Karen is obviously miming here because she's so spot on and it sounds like the record. She actually sounds better than the record live <laughs> and the waveforms are gonna back this up. So as we move back through here, we can see, actually let's move it on a little bit. We've got a little bit of a held note on the original record and the great thing about waveforms is that they never lie. So we know that these are two different vocals because on this version on the record, she's holding a note and then vibratoing but here, she's sliding straight up into the note and vibratoing instantly. But when you listen to both of these voices together, they sound exactly the same, but they are not because the waveforms show that they're not. You are near, just like me. They long to be close to you. you. And you can hear how on uh, the live vocal, she just exaggerates that vibrato at the end, holds on a little bit longer. You can definitely hear they're two different vocals, but it just sounds like it could be the same vocal, especially when they overlap. When we go here... You are near, just like me. 
Listen to how accurate that is. Not only pitch-wise, the expression, everything about it sounds the same, but the waveforms are different. She is a little bit more accurate in the live vocal than she was in the studio. And this is the point that I was making about only needing one take to record in the studio because she's just doing another take effectively with her live vocal. Just for a bit of fun, we'll have a listen to both of these vocals that are now going out of sync because of that difference in tempo, but you can hear one phrase followed by the next phrase. And the great thing is as well, if I was to isolate the uh, studio version, we have a listen. Fall down from the sky. Every time you walk by You can hear that that is a studio quality vocal. It's like Karen's sitting in front of you. It's so clear. So we know that that was done in the studio. As soon as we change back to the live version, have a listen to the vocal. Fall down from the sky Every time you walk by you can hear that slight bit of reverb that they've put on her voice for the live performance. Because she's just singing over a backing track, they just want to sit it in there with the backing track a little bit more, but certainly with the record, it's a lot drier. So let's bring everything back because, like I said, for a bit of fun, we'll have a listen to both of these phrases going one after the next to listen hear and appreciate how accurate Karen was vocally with everything that she did. The expression, the phrasing, the vibrato, the pitch, it's just all bang on. Why do Every time, every time you walk by, you walk by. Just like me, just like me, they long to be, long to be, to you, to you. And I'm going to stop it there, because I have no doubt that Joe Public would watch this live performance and they'd say, "Oh, Karen never sang live, but she was this good that." You can only prove somebody is singing live when they're this good through waveforms, which we can now do, which is great. Let me get this full screen for you guys so you can see that here, the original record, this is less accurate than the live vocal. So live, she was bang on the D4 on the release. On the studio album, on the single, she was flat and then vibratoed flat. And she really held it straight a lot more on that live vocal. The great thing about these waveforms is we can prove that it's a different vocal, even though to the ear, it sounds exactly the same. Let's just run it back and have another listen just to that last section. Me. They love to be to be to you. Yes, certainly on that original record, she exaggerates it with that vibrato, holds the note on for a lot longer. On the live vocal, she does cut it off a lot more quickly. Even the waveforms start to look the same because of how consistent she was vocally. Because look at this, the way that we're ascending straight up to the B3 and here, straight up to that B3, back down again, and then we were slightly sharp, and here she was bang on, uh, but slightly sharp in that live vocal, and then bang on again B3 in the studio, and also on the live vocal. And just as a final example, to be able to hear the difference between that live vocal and the studio vocal, it's really subtle, but in this live performance, I'm just gonna play one phrase where she sings, you walk by, and listen to the way that, when she's singing this, she kind of leans into the sound a little bit more. Let's have a listen. You walk by. So she kind of leans into that a little bit. Let's play it again, just to get this stored in our memory before we listen to the studio version. You walk by. And let's get rid of that. And now we're going to listen to the studio version. 
Every time you walk by. And you hear a little bit of a crackle in the voice, and she goes a little bit more clean head voice with that. You walk by. It's a lot lighter. So because she's using less air and it's a lighter sound she's not forcing it out that's why she then goes into that vocal fry sound like the cry at the end of that vocal phrase when she's singing it live she's leaning into the sound a little bit more like i said so the vocal cords are more connected and you don't get the the vocal fry sound at the end that cry you so it's a combination of air but a lot more of a consistent sound not allowing those vocal cords to break apart fully like she does on the studio version and this is the kind of detail that you have to get into to appreciate how good Karen Carpenter was vocally that you would not be able to tell the difference between a studio vocal and a live vocal because they are so similar she's just singing exactly the same way all the time she's singing as accurately live as she did in the studio, arguably more accurate live than she did in the studio. I actually don't blame anybody for thinking this was a mimed performance. It just so happens that we've got now technology at our disposal where we can prove beyond any doubt that they are two separate vocals, but because they are so similar because of her ability as a vocalist, people might make that mistake. But I know that I've done maybe one or two, or maybe two separate analysis videos on Karen Carpenter. One of those was when she was playing drums as well. Let me just throw in here about Richard and the fact that he was so much a part of it as well. It wasn't just Karen. I mean, Richard is just an amazing songwriter, musician, multi-instrumentalist, you name it, singer as well. So a big shout out to Richard. So thank you guys for all of the requests to take a look at Karen. Check out those other analysis videos on Karen on the channel here somewhere. I think it's great that we can look at Karen's voice in this kind of detail now. I find it so enlightening to look at the waveforms because they explain visually more than I can say. I try, as I have done in the other analysis videos, when talking about vocalists, I've tried to explain about the vibrato being waveforms and ascending, descending to notes being slightly flat, slightly sharp, but now we have a visual representation of it, which shows you how great the great singers were and it can also show you where there are singers who are using auto-tune, who are directly on lines, that are using machines in order to get the kind of accuracy that Karen Carpenter had, but without actually having the accuracy that Karen Carpenter had. The real devil is in the details of not being on the note all the time. And even where I've frozen it here, we can see on the screen that Karen wasn't on the lines all the time, but she was pretty much dead on, not only to 440 hertz tuning, but she was just hitting the best notes all the time. And that's why it just sounds great to the ear all the time. Thank you guys for requesting this one. Keep those suggestions and requests coming in the comments section below. As you can see, my wrist is still on the mend, so we'll probably be doing more vocal analysis videos over maybe the next week or so, depending on how long it takes my wrist to recover so I can get back to playing guitar. But if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys at the next one. Rock!